Welcome to Revival Cycles Tech Talk. I'm Stefan, and in this episode, we're going to explain exactly how a starter solenoid works and why you need it. All right, so most bikes have starter solenoids, and there's a very good reason why you need one, and it's because the starter uses a lot of power from the battery, and that maybe doesn't seem like that big a deal, but the issue comes in having to switch it. So when you need to turn that power to the starter on, the little handlebar switches on the bars aren't going to be able to cut it. The very small contacts would end up just burning and basically uh, almost like welding themselves apart if you were to try to run the full 100 plus amps through uh, the handlebar contacts feeding the power to the starter. So in order to get around that, we use something that is called a starter solenoid. Now. This is the starter solenoid that we sell, and I'll explain all about the fancy things that it can do and why it is the one that we sell. But first, the solenoid is really just a variation on a standard 12 volt relay. And the general principle of how a 12 volt relay works is that there is a control coil, and then there are these two terminals. And the two terminals on top are what we would call like the switch side. And that means that this is where the high power current goes through. And then there's some contacts inside of here that actually attach to the control coil inside of this. We'll start by going over the parts and pieces that come in this kit and then we'll get a little bit more detail about how this thing actually works and how you actually use it. So this is a pretty standard one. You've seen it uh, probably from a few other sellers, but we sell one that's slightly different. And the reason it's different is because they give you this really nice plastic clip, but in the standard kit that everybody else sells, they don't include the little terminals that you crimp on the wires to put in this little clip. Instead, they give you these stupid wires that have no useful purpose whatsoever, and you would have to just kind of like guess and check to see which terminals they need to go on, and then you've got this kind of useless half ring terminal and some bullet connectors. Like, why even put this in the kit? What a waste. The other good side about this is that you do get some convenient mounting brackets that are really pretty easy to use. You can either just bolt to these or these are steel so you can weld them onto a frame. And then all you got to do is just run them through these little side pieces. And that helps um, keep the solenoid isolated from vibration. And that's pretty, pretty nice. So basically you can just mount that and now your solenoid is on the bike. The other really nice part about the one that we sell is it comes with a main fuse. And that may not seem like that big a deal, but this is a really convenient place and a convenient package to put your main fuse because you've already got one big heavy cable that's going to the battery and it's got a constant supply of power. That means it comes from the battery, goes to the battery post, that's the one that's marked with a B, and then that feeds through the main fuse and then it goes to these two terminals on the back over here. And that's really useful because now you've got one wire that goes to the battery and it can feed the starter and it can also feed the M unit and all the other downstream functions, M unit, charging system, on and on and on through this one simple fuse location. Additionally, you've also got two contact terminals here. One of those can go to the M unit and the other one can go to the charging system. So this is just a simple way that you can kind of get everything connected in one um, location with the least amount of hassle. So. That's the deal. This is a tried and true piece that's been used for years and years and years. We've added this one very simple component that makes it so much easier for you to actually install this on your bike. And that allows you to just connect these to the wires that you're already using. And then it just plugs right in, piece of cake. All right, so that's the hardware. Now some theory. If you don't like theory, you can watch something else. So what's going on inside the solenoid? We've got the two contacts that are these kind of upper terminals. I'm gonna draw those just as these two contacts right here. So these are the ones that have the, the screw terminals on them. And they've got some threads. You'll probably find out in just a minute that I'm an awful, awful artist. Um, then inside of here, we've also got a contact plate that looks kind of something like that maybe. And it's got a post on it. Now this post is made of metal and that goes through a coil that I'm going to draw, and this is the control coil. I'm going to draw this in brown, and that just kind of loops around here. And then you've got the two contacts of that control coil that come out, and those are right here and right there. So in order to make the, the solenoid work, we need a battery. So let's just draw a quick battery. And there's a positive and a negative. 
So we've got the positive that goes up to our terminal here, and then we'll, we'll have a little starter motor over here. And that is the starter motor. And then from the solenoid, this goes over to your starter motor. Then we've got our control coil right here and right here. Right now, the circuit is incomplete because we need some grounds. So we'll just throw a ground right there and a ground right there. With it in this condition, the starter motor is not doing anything. It's not active and the solenoid is open. So there's no contact between these two pieces. When we connect the control coil to positive and to ground, then current flows through this coil and that causes the contact plate to actually physically move up into a new position where it actually connects these two terminals. Now current can flow all the way through the system, through the starter, the bike starts. As soon as you break this by letting off your starter button, the contact plate moves back to its original position and there is no longer any flow for the starter. And that is the basic operation of a solenoid. And that may be too much information for some of you, but I know that there's a few of you guys out there that have not been completely clear on how this works. Maybe this wasn't adequate to fully explain it, but hopefully this gave you a little bit of a gist of how the starter solenoid works and also why you need it. Like I said, this is a high quality unit. Because we use these all the time, we know that it's missing pieces from every other place that you can get it. And we figured out where to find those pieces and added them back in. So if you need a starter solenoid, which if you've got an old bike, you do, these do wear out because the contacts after repeated use basically get burned and pitted. And eventually they just don't really work very well. So doing a project, pick up a solenoid. It's worth it. That way your bike always starts. And you probably want to pick up this one because like I said, it's got all the parts you need. So. Find them at RevivalCycles.com. Because we use these on our builds, we know how they work. We know how they don't work. And we know how to help you get them integrated into your project. If you've got any questions, you can send us an email to tech support at RevivalCycles.com or you can shoot us a phone call. Either way, we're here to help you get your project back on the road. And with that, thanks for watching.